Hi, how's it going? I'm Malachi Grubb, CEO and engineer of Elite Automation. So today, I'm going to kind of take y'all through uh, background edits in the Fanuc robot. So one of the topics that I, I want to touch on and what actually got triggered me to make this video is that sometimes you can get into an instance where the uh, Fanuc robot won't let you do a background edit and will give you a error message. And so what we'll do is go ahead and jump into that real quick. Yeah, so right here is the TPIF-167 alarm program already in background edit. This video is going to kind of show you a little bit just about background edits in general and helping you understand what background edits are. So as you can see right here, uh, here is your background edit number. So there's a background edit four, background edit five, background edit six. Okay, uh, Fanuc has a total of six background edit programs. And essentially what it allows you to do is edit multiple programs at the same time if need be. Uh, I don't know why you'd necessarily need to do that, but it, they give you the option to do so. And the way this is laid out is that background edit one through three, so one, two, and three are on the teach pendant. So if you're on the teach pendant doing a background edit, there'll be background edit one, two, and three, okay? Now the other three background edits are utilized for the web browser interface. So if you have the remote eye pendant option installed in your robot and you can access its web browser interface, uh, you will have three more background edit programs. And that will be the background edit four, background edit five, and background edit six. And that's something to really keep in mind too because if somebody is doing web browser interface edits uh, on like a background edit and they forget to close out of that, it'll prevent you from being able to do a background edit on the teach pen and it'll forever be locked out until you go back into your web browser interface and uh, do an end edit whether you throw away all the edits or whether you keep them. So one of the things that I wanted to show y'all is that notice how I have three different displays here. Well, generally what will happen is if you have just one display open, you can't just select a different background edit. You can't just say background edit five, background edit six, background blah, blah, blah. It just has the background edit that you have the ability to, to edit right there. And if I'm not mistaken, what happens is, is display one gets background edit four, display two gets background edit five, and display three gets uh, background edit six. Now that may not be true. It may just kind of auto assign. So it, it may do, if you did a background edit on this screen and then you went to this screen, it does background edit five here. And then if you went to this screen and did a background edit, it would be a background edit six here. Uh, but just kind of keep that in mind how that may work. So a big thing that will cause an issue is somebody will see this background edit, right? They won't really pay attention to this number, they'll ignore it, and they won't know how to get to the background edit five and six, and they'll, they'll go through the list and they'll be like, why am I not Why am I not able to edit? Why am I not, you know what I mean? Why can I not edit this program? This is the only background edit I can find. Well, the reason why you can't find the other background edits is because they're buried back on the other displays. So I'm gonna go ahead and take you guys to RoboGuide real quick and show you that. So here in RoboGuide, you have the ability on the robot teach spinner to hit this display button, and I believe shift display gives you the ability to change this from single, double, or triple. So you'll need to go triple. If you have a background edit that's lost, you'll have to go triple. And then uh, from here, now you can go pick a display, hit select, and then you should be able to go back up to the top of the screen. And notice how it says background edit two. If I hit enter, now it's asking me to select a program for background edit two. I'm gonna go down to the other one and I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna go select. I'm gonna now notice it has background edit three. So I'm in RoboGuide, and as you can see, it's acting as if it is the actual teach pendant. Uh, it's not acting as if it is the remote eye pendant. And just for example's sake, what I wanna do is I wanna go ahead and go previous. See if we can skip out of this real quick. Matter of fact, I'm just gonna choose, I'm gonna choose a program. It says okay, and then I'm gonna do an end edit. So seven end edit, you sure you want to implement that? I'm gonna say no. Do you want to discard the modifications? Yes. Okay, so I just did that just to get out of that screen. And I'm gonna go select, it's background edit three. So it, it does pertain to the display it looks like. So 
This one will always be background edit one, this will always be background edit two, and this will be at background edit three. Hopefully guys, this was useful for you all. Um, this wasn't really a, a video necessarily on how to do background edits, um, but it was more so to, to get you a solution to if you potentially cannot end an edit, or if you cannot go into an edit, I should say. If you can't end an edit, it's probably because you're already in the, pro the program's probably running in the robot right now, and that's why I won't let you do an end edit. If you could, so if you cannot go into a background edit on a particular program and it gives you that TPIF-167, I believe, if it gives you that alarm, it's saying that one of these other background edits has a hold of that. And just for example's sake, let's just see if I can do this. So this is already in a background edit. This is Jig 3. Let's go background edit on this one. Let's go Jig 3, see if I can get that same. Boom. TPIF-167, program already in background edit. So that'll be the alarm that you get. Just keep that in mind, guys. That thing can really hang you up, and you may end up with a program in the background edit, and then you can't do background edits anymore, which severely handicaps you if you really need to do a background edit on that program because background edits are super powerful, and they give you the ability to uh, you know, modify the robot code on the fly. One last thing I'd like to add before we sign off here today is I have heard of like some horror stories of people doing a background edit and accepting an edit while the program is running and it updates the data to the robot and it's, it, it does it essentially when maybe the robot's going to a position and it's using data to go to a position that you're modifying. So if you're modifying data that the robot's using to get to that position, uh, it can do some crazy stuff. I've heard things where the robot just all of a sudden just does some crazy moves and just basically loses its mind. I think that's an older uh, fanic version thing. I don't think you, you really see that on like the 30IA, 30IB controllers, but it's something to be very cautious of because it is something that can occur. Hopefully this is helpful for you guys. If there's anything in particular on the background edits that you'd like to know, just put it down in the comments below and uh, just any automation related topics uh, we can help you out with as well. So just make sure you put them in the comments, ask, reach out, need any systems integrated. We focus on, on New system integration, that's what our company does as a, as a primary business model. And we look forward to catching you on the next one.